Okay, it's Pipes Drums here. It's May 29th, 2021. We're here with Yori Chisholm of Seattle, Washington, USA. And Yori is coming out with a brand new product. It's called the Perfect Angle Blowpipe Positioner. Uh, pretty cool product. You've had a sneak peek at it. So tell us a little bit about the Perfect Angle Blowpipe Positioner, Yori. Andrew, good to see you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on here. Yeah, so... Um, as you know, we pipers, we always play at our best when our pipes feel good and they sound good. So I've been playing for a long time and teaching full time for over 20 years now and students of all different ages and levels and pipe bands. And so as with a, a lot of people in my position who are top competitors and teachers, I'm totally obsessed with finding any way and doing anything that I can do to make my pipes feel really good they're efficient and steady and sounding good. So um, making sure that my, I got the good reads and that they're set up right and that my channel read is in properly conditioned. And then in terms of making the pipe fit, it's really important to me that the bag is the right size, the blow pipe is the right length. But there's this additional problem that had bothered me for a long time and that's the blow pipe. So the blow pipe, it's the only musical instrument component that I can think of that is held by your mouth, right? And most pipe bags that I've had, the natural position for where the blowpipe wants to go is not in the right position for me. So sort of wants to pop out or go to the side. And I know pipers will get really obsessive about retying that blowpipe stock just to try to do whatever they can do to get it in the right position. So that's the problem is that and that blowpipe doesn't want to be where you want it to be. And you look at any piper's mouthpiece and you'll see there's usually some pretty decent bite marks there that show that there's, you know, some significant chomping down to hold that thing into position. So that's the basic uh, challenge that I observed in my own playing and then with others. And embarked down this journey to see like, well, what could we do? Is there something that I could do, some sort of device or system that I could do to position that thing? and a couple years of working on it and testing out different prototypes and came up with this product that I'm releasing now. And what it allows you to do, it attaches to the pipes and attaches in three positions on the blowpipe stock, the bass drone stock and the tenor drone stock, the middle tenor. And you can adjust these two little um, sort of strap like things and you can adjust the exact angle of the blowpipe and then the position. So from side to side and then towards the player and away from the player. And if you get it right, it will sit exactly where you want it to sit, right in the center or side of your mouth or if you want it. And then you can let go with your teeth in your mouth and it just stays right there. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm a big believer in uh, often that the, the best products are kind of like, seem like the most obvious ones. Uh, and uh, it seems like uh, this is just so simple and so straightforward. How much is is the positioner uh, going to be priced at? Uh, it's going to be thirty nine ninety nine. Okay. So, and, and how you know we've we've seen the the ball and socket uh, you know adjustable flexible blow, blow pipes. Uh, how would this differ from that? Obviously, a lot cheaper. Well, cheaper. And um, what I like about um, and the perfect angle is that it has a really sleek profile. So, you know, it, you maintain that traditional look. And um, I think that's important to us pipers. You know, we, we're sort of, we are innovating, but we want to stay true to our tradition, especially in terms of the appearance. And if you put it under your bag cover, it's totally invisible. So there's that advantage, you maintain that traditional look. And also you can, you know, you can keep the blowpipe that, that came with your instrument. So it's a, it's a, you know, you don't need that extra part and it, it has a nice visual look to it. Yeah, for those, uh, you know, silver and ivory, uh, old set of Hendersons or lorries or even some of the new pipes, it's, it's you know, kind of important to hang on to your, your blowpipe to, for the aesthetic, if nothing else. And it sounds like yeah, a good, I think good it's, solution. You know, I think that's really important, you know, and um, what, this, what this Perfect Angle product does is you get that the improved ergonomics and the ergonomics of piping has improved a lot over the years. If you look at the old photos with the you know, little short pipers with these super long blow pipe, 
or the bag is shooting out so far is that the pipe channel is almost horizontal coming back towards them. And then the drones are tied out, you know, super wide spacing between the drones. All those things, you know, we know now um, about ergonomics and about having a neutral body position and about, you know, repetitive stress injuries that you can get if something is the wrong size or is putting pressure on um, over a long period of time, that stuff really adds up. I was talking to one uh, very famous piper and he told me that he had to go into the dentist once a year to get chipped teeth fixed. So every year he's going in and, and getting these uh, damaged teeth fixed. And that was in this conversation, he was talking about that blowpipe and biting down on that blowpipe because mm. it just wants to shoot out. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And, you know, if you're worried about your blowpipe flipping out, you know, which, you know, I've got, I've got to confess, I used to have a phobia about that. And so I was an early adopter of the ball and socket kind of concept that Colin Wynn Stanley, I think, was the first person to come up with that. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it takes a lot of pressure off. You don't need that extra kind of thing in the back of your mind, you know, while you're trying to uh, get through the band performance at uh, a major competition. Oh, gosh. I mean, there's there's just a lot that goes into feeling comfortable when you're playing your pipes. And, um, you know, there's a physical conditioning component. So you're, you're always going to have to be in shape and make sure that you're practicing. So all these piping specific muscle groups are, are, are working and that they're, they're in shape, but there's so much that we can do in terms of making sure that the instrument is set up and properly and maintained properly. I remember so clearly when I got a bag that fit me and when I got a blowpipe that fit me. And especially with just, I was a smaller kid and, and that's one of the challenges of playing the pipes as a smaller person is that it's a big instrument. So anything you can do to scale it down to make it fit the players so much, it's just such a huge help. I remember when I finally got pipes that fit me and I could actually, my bottom hand would sit more comfortably on the channer. I mean, I've got pictures of me as a kid playing with pipes that are way bigger than they are than what I play now when, when I was a much smaller, a much smaller person. So all those yeah. things add up to um, greater comfort, um, less strain on different parts of your body and just the ability to enjoy playing. And I think that anything that we can do to make the bagpipes sound better, um, easier to deal with, more comfortable, less painful, these are all good things as far as I'm concerned for the individual and also for people who love piping and love the idea of, of more people, you know, enjoying playing the bagpipes. It's all, it's all, it's all progress as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and speaking of that, I mean, with bagpipelessons.com, you know, your your company, you've you've introduced quite a few products, uh, real in a, innovative, and often quite straightforward um, products. You know, I th I think you know, if one were to look at it, they're they're all geared towards making a better player. I think. Uh, so you know, but is there a certain kind of piper who you're you're uh, trying to attract with your products? Do you have that uh, kind of piper in mind or is it just any piper? Yeah, I think it's it's any any piper. So, I mean, my, um, what I'm shooting for is try to find products that are useful and provide benefit to every kind of player. And those are the things that I'm most interested in in terms of making a positive impact for pipers. So, for example, my tone protector, which is this, um, um, humidity controlling channer cap has been a very popular product and won an award um, from Pipes Drums. And we have players that are winning clasps playing this product, and we have players that are complete beginners. So it's the whole range. And to me, that's um, that means that it works because pipers are, um, you know, we're very practical types. And, and my products are not about looks. They're not, it's not like a, some sort of stylistic accessory that you that you use to sh to show something about yourself. These are products that are functional, and when you have you know top grade one pipe bands and then pipe bands all the way down to you know sort of the parade band level and players at the whole spectrum, um, to me that shows that it works because pipers are practical and they're not going to be fooled into getting something um, 
Well, certainly a, a product like the tone protector would not be successful at the level that it has been if it didn't really work and provide some benefit for people. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the proof is in the pudding is, you know, the adoption of the products. You know, we look back, you know, I can't help but think, you know, uh, 1960s or 70s, you know, sports like golf and skiing, very straightforward. You know, you, you had uh, not a lot of selection when it com came to uh, the clubs or the skis or things. And now today it's just like every year there's there's more and more kind of product. You know, it seems like a lot of parallels with uh, with piping uh, and drumming for that matter too. You know, uh, it seems like an endless stream of new products are coming out that promise to improve your game. Uh, you know, do you think piping and drumming are sort of, is there an equivalence, we, you know, with that kind of hobbyist uh, right into skiing or golf or whatever sport it might be? Yeah, I, I'm a skier. I'm an avid skier. I'm not a golfer, so I don't know about the golfing world. But I think we're in an interesting time now with um, online shopping. And we have sort of this global marketplace. So there's the opportunity for um, innovators, product developers, people running businesses, developing products to get your product out there. The barriers to entry are much lower. You can come up with an idea, get a Facebook page, and just kind of dive into it. Now, that doesn't mean that the products are going to be any good. So still, that's the challenge is, and certainly that's what I'm striving for, is to have products that really work, that provide value, that are useful to, you know, every piper. And um, I'm not interested in making uh, gimmicks or gadgets or things that, um, you know, just try to sell, sell useless products to people. I'm interested in really helping make an impact and a positive impact for Pipers. For sure. Uh, you know, it's uh, great to see more products coming out on the market, but, you know, I have to talk about your online competitions. Uh, you know, the, the solo online solo world championships, uh, you know, and, and the stream of, of, of those things um, that have done so well, you know, really, uh, you've kind of wrote the book on it almost, I would think, in, in 2011, you know, when you first started online competitions. And then, you know, if there's a silver lining, you know, that we always look for with the pandemic, you resurrected them as a lot of people followed you uh, and that idea. How has how, how that worked for you? It's, uh, you know, I believe you had 1,600 entries uh, for the first one you did way back in the spring of 2020. How do you keep That's up right. with it all? Yeah, so thank you. I mean, this, so this World Online um, Piping and Drumming Championships, we just finished our 10th competition and um, started, in, started the first one in 2011 and just got this, 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 uh, inspiration came to me when I was living abroad for six months and I was sort of fully remote for the first time and just some ideas came to me and one of them was this idea of doing an online piping and now piping and drumming and pipe down competition. You know competition is huge for us as as you know and as I'm sure most of the your um, our, our viewers know that's the primary way that we perform for many of us it's how we get together as a community. Um, and as we've seen over the last year, it's a huge part of how we find inspiration to keep practicing and to keep getting together as a band and to keep doing, you know, keep working on our, uh, on our skills is through competition for better or worse. That's just a, a big part of it for us. So I ran a bunch of these competitions about 10 years ago and um, they were a success, had hundreds of competitors and entries and then got busy with some other things, working on my tone protector and some other products, had a couple of young kids, and then um, had always thought that I would bring back the online competition. And then this last spring when the pandemic hit, that was when I knew, um, well, I felt, a, I felt a responsibility to bring it back for the piping and drumming world because it was such a scary time, so much uncertainty and it just seemed like the right thing to do. We got 1,600 uh, registrations. We did another one last summer and then in the fall. And then here we are. I never imagined we'd still be in the uh, in pandemic life. Here we are. And we just finished our 10th our one. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's been a wonderful thing for 
our competitors and for our judges and for the viewers. To me, it seems like kind of a win-win all around. We get so much positive feedback from our competitors who are just incredibly thankful to have something to strive for, to be part of something that's big, um, to be able to get some feedback. You know, it's another thing that as competing pipers and drummers, we love getting those sheets and we love getting that feedback. So having world-class judges is really important. We wanna pick judges who are world-class in their, in their respective disciplines, but also who will do a great job with uh, awarding the prizes and will do a fantastic job with the, with the comment sheets. So yeah. feedback from the judges has been really positive. Um, and I just feel, you know, I feel fortunate um, to be able to give back over the last year, you know, I feel, you know, very thankful. I mean, my whole life has been piping for a really long time and I've gotten so much from going to the local Highland games and from all the volunteers and the associations. And I think sometimes as a competing piper, it's real easy to take for granted that you're just going to show up on a certain weekend and it's just all going to be there, you know, and, and you know, the tents are going to be there. The judges are going to be there. The stewards are going to be there. And um, then we get to go and do what we love to do. So it's, to me, I feel uh, fortunate that I can be in this position with my online experience and particularly with sort of, you know, creating this online piping competition format to be able to bring it back. Yeah, well, I'm sure uh, everybody who takes part is appreciative as well. And, you know, they, they have to recognize that the hard work that you've put into it and, uh, you know, you and your team, and you know, it shows in, uh, the leadership, I think, position that you've you've sort of taken with the online competitions. Okay, so let's let's wrap it up. Back to the the uh, the products. You've always got something coming up. You you know the perfect angle blowpipe positioner is the latest, but what's on the horizon? What's coming up? Gosh, well, I I always have things in the works, and um, I don't have any big announcements for you today. But in terms of the online competition, we'll be doing one in the summer. We're looking for a video deadline in mid to late August. So people can check out bagpipelessons.com and or check out the bagpipelessons.com Facebook page. And uh, I think just, just stay tuned. You know, I think there are a lot of, you know, there are, I think, I don't think we're gonna run out of ways to try to, to find ways to make piping easier have the instrument sound better, stay in tune longer and be more comfortable. So that's just mm -hmm. what I'm working on. That's great. Well, really appreciate the time, Yuri, that uh, you've taken. Uh, thanks for the uh, the heads up and the the sneak peek and the, the first out of the gate with a perfect angle blowpipe positioner. Good luck with the product. And we'll be looking forward to more stuff in the future for, uh, for you and uh, bagpipelessons.com. Thanks, Andrew. We love we love pipes, drums, and it's one of the places I go almost every day. And thanks for being a hub for keeping our community together over the last year, especially. All right. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Yuri.